Nigeria or oh, Nigeria. Why salary increase may cause more harm than good? Two unrelated pieces of information prompted the writing of this piece. First was the statement from the chairman of the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission, Mohamed Delushehu, when he paid a courtesy visit to the chairman of Nigerian Governors Forum, Governor Aminu Tambul of Sokoto State in his office in Abuja. He said the commission had concluded arrangements to review upwards, of course, the remuneration of public officers in Nigeria. The last time such was carried out for these categories of Nigerians, according to him, was in 2008, which makes it even overdue for review, he stated. The second was the decision by the Central Bank of Nigeria to redesign the 200 Naira, 500 Naira, and 1,000 Naira notes by December 15, 2020. The Apex Bank said the existing notes will no longer be regarded as legal tender by January 31st, 2023. Justifying the development, the CBN governor, Godwin MFLA, in an announcement made on October 26th, disclosed that 85% of the currency in circulation is being hoarded by Nigerians and that redesigning the notes will help to curb counterfeiting as well as frustrate ransom collection by terrorists and kidnappers. On his side, the revenue mobilization boss lamented what he described as the poor remuneration of public, political and judicial office holders which has exposed them to corrupt tendencies, according to him. His move, he said, was underpinned by paragraph 32D of part one to the third schedule of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, which empowers the commission to determine the remuneration appropriate to political, public and judicial office holders in the country. On the other hand, MFLS move has the strong backing of the president. When the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Haji Zainab Ahmed, countered MFLA on the proposal during a 2023 budget defense session with the Senate Committee on Finance, no less a person than President Muhammad Buhari came out to throw his weight behind the Apex Bank's decision. As things stand now, none of the above measures can be stopped because of the firm belief in the most powerful office in the land that their time has come. Whatever people will say may not be enough to reverse the decisions already taken. What the Hausa man will call Ihunka Banza. And so, this is just to put things down on record for the sake of posterity. But Shehu's statement did not just come out of the blues. It was like icing on the cake. After putting sugar in the mouths of other workers. In August, the president has said there was a need for an urgent salary review in the federal civil service owing to the high inflation rate across the world. The country's inflation rate surged to 19.64% in July 2022, up from 18.60% in the previous month, according to the Consumer Price Index, CPI. And on August 31, Ekpo Nta, chairman of the National Salaries Income and Wages Commission, issued a circular to the effect that the president had approved an increment in duty tour allowances, DTS, for ministers, permanent secretaries, and civil servants on grade levels 1 to 17, with effect from September 1. According to the circular, 
duty to allowances applicable to permanent secretary or equivalent moved from 20,000 naira to 70,000 naira. While those for minister, secretary to the government of the federation, head of civil service of the federation, and equivalent rose from 35,000 naira to 80,000 naira. The raise went down all the way to level one officers. A duty tour refers to an official trip embarked upon by a public servant. Nigeria has seen many commissions set up even before independence to consider the nation's pay structure to arrive at an enduring one befitting of an income policy. The major ones were the Hunt Commission in 1934, the Bridges Committee of Inquiry in 1941, the Trudeau Davis Commission, 1945, the Harajin Commission, 1946, the Miller Commission of 1947, the Gosuk Commission, 1955, the Nunes Commission, the Elwood Grading Team, 1956, and the Mbanefo Commission of 1959. Others were the Morgan Commission of 1963, the Adebo Commission 1970 to 1971, the Public Service Review Commission Udoji Report 1974, the Kuki Commission 1981, the Fatai Williams Committee 1990, the Commission on the Review of Higher Education in Nigeria, Longe Commission, the 1994 Review Panel on the Civil Service Reforms, that's the AIDA Panel, 1994, the Vision 2010 Committee Report in 1997, and the Committee on Harmonization of Remuneration in the Public Service, 1998. What this portends is that there will be a considerable increase in monthly cash flow, that's the increase in salary, the recipients have more money coming in, meaning more money to spend. The people involved will now more easily meet their financial obligations. This increased purchasing power in many hands will galvanize production and improve the overall economy. Productivity as a consequence will get a boost because the worker who gets a pay rise will be motivated to embrace his work with the seriousness it deserves. Thus, there will be more efficiency and effectiveness in the workplace, ultimately leading to increased productivity. However, in Nigeria, once there is a salary increase, the price of everything goes up, and nothing that has gone up ever comes down again. Going by experience, perhaps except for just one time, when the late President Musa Iradua reduced the pump price of petrol in 2007. In 1972, when the Udoji Commission recommended, among others, a unified grading and salary structure, UGSS, which embraced all posts in the civil service from the lowest to the highest, the Naira was stronger than the dollar at about 60 Naira to $100. The commission increased the annual minimum wage from 312 Naira to 720 Naira, the equivalent of $1,200. As of the time of writing this, $100 was nudging 90,000 Naira. Today, $1,200 will be close to 1,080,000 Naira. What this means is that the Udoji Commission's minimum wage of 60 Naira, that's $100, had more purchasing power than today's minimum wage of 30,000 Naira, which is just about $33 now. Then, just imagine $100 as the basic monthly salary today. 
That's some tidy 90,000 naira. One million naira as minimum wage will help no one as long as the naira is weak, period. Therefore, rather than increase salaries, the government should do all it can to strengthen the naira. A very strong naira will see market forces pushing down the price of commodities, thereby strengthening the purchasing power of Nigerians. The salaries being currently received will then look very, very, very okay. But if salaries must be increased, and the government will do it anyway, because it is a populist one and elections are around the corner, the government will do well to explore the idea of price control. While the advantage is that it may lead to lower prices for consumers, the consequence is that it may lead to lower supply and a reduction of quality. However, price stability helps to avoid both inflation and deflation. Another idea that the government must explore or should explore is a drastic cut in salaries and allowances of public officers, especially those of elected officials political appointees and heads of MDAs, ministries, departments, and agencies, rather than increasing them. After all, Nigeria does not have the money to pay university lecturers decent salaries. The saved money can be used to finance the salary increase. This way, the negative consequences will be mitigated. Thank you.